Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job, I work as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is, of course, not about my day job. It's about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've been to my presentations uh, at the Senior Center, you know that Frank and Mary have a simple goal. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Hudson, that means right here. They don't even want to move to faraway Marlboro, where I live. Even though my wife is from Hudson and moved to Marlboro, it's not that bad, but they want to stay right in Hudson. And so... The goal of the show is to help you find the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about to stay in Hudson. Now, they may be directly just relevant to seniors or to a whole lot of people and you among them. But my get my uh, my co-host, who is a person that most people here do know, is John Parent, who has been a selectman now for three years. I keep trying to convince him to run for re-election. I hope he does. But that's just a personal comment. Um, and he finds these great guests. Um, and so, John, whom do we have today? Well, first of all, let me correct you. It's six years. Six years. Well, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, it, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce our guest today. Uh, Kelly Kahlo is the director of public and community health for the town of Hudson. And if there is ever a department head uh, who is facing a serious challenge uh, in order to do their job, it, it's Kelly. Uh, th this uh, is a nightmare with COVID-19 and certainly something that uh, nobody uh, anticipated or expected uh, what would be as bad as it is. So uh, the first thing I want to do, Kelly, is thank you for taking the time. I, I know that if there's one thing that's very valuable uh, to you at this point is time. Uh, so we really do appreciate your coming on. Uh, Kelly, I, I do have some questions, um, and, and I'm sure Arthur does as well, uh, but maybe you could just uh, lead it off, you know, give us an update, uh, give us a kind of an idea of where we're heading, and you take it from here. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kelly. I've been with the town of Hudson for over five years now. I've been the department head for three, or oh, just over three. Um, as you all know, and what John just said, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, if you don't know that by now, here we are. Um, <laughs> so we, we are seeing a very new surge in the COVID-19 pandemic. I think it's personally, I think it's a lot worse now than it was prior to. Um, we're seeing a lot more cases come out or see the number of cases that we're getting per week are just, um, crazy large. Uh, this past week, I believe we had 84 cases. Today, we got another eight. Um, we're seeing more deaths as well. Um, we j I just got another phone call this morning about an additional death that we've had in the town of Hudson. Um, so we're up to six deaths, where we hovered around three for quite some time in this past month or so. We've gotten three additional deaths. Um, so it's COVID is very much still here. Um, I fear that COVID will be here for a while. Um, even after people get vaccinated, we're going to see, I think, a long-term health effects of COVID, including um, people who are suffering from mental illness at this point. Um, isolation has been real, especially for people who are vulnerable and the, especially the elderly population who are, were already confined to their homes are much more confined to their homes now um, because of the health risks of going out. Um, so that's pretty much where we are with COVID. We just hired a full-time public health nurse. She started on Thursday of last week. She came over from the Marlboro Public Health Department. Um, and her first day was vaccinating our first responders. So we were able to help hold a clinic with uh, the Marlboro Board of Health to vaccinate our firefighters and our police officers in town. So that was Thursday and Friday last week. Um, and that was the Moderna vaccine. They'll get their second dose um, the first week of February. So we're excited that we were able to offer that to our first responders as they're an essential part of our community and keeping everyone safe. Very good. Very good. Arthur, I do have a couple of questions if I may. No, 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 John, this is, I very much, you know, this is a very local issue. And I, you know, I, I'm, I'm so, so Kelly, we, we've, we've done a show before when you were just starting a long time ago, right? 
Uh, mm -hmm. But my job here is basically to provide comic relief and keep track of the time. So, so a lot of the questions will be coming from John because obviously the selectmen have really been on top of this and really interested. John. All right, good. Thank you, Arthur. I appreciate it. Um, Kelly, let me ask you about uh, vaccines. Um, I, I don't know if it was the state of New York or New York City, um, but they are getting a little uh, rambunctious because they're not getting the supplies uh, that they expected from uh, the federal government. So what they're going to do is they're going to go direct uh, to Pfizer and um, Moderna or whatever the other one is and see if they can start ordering supplies themselves. Any idea what the state of mass is as far as supply? So I, I think the supply across the nation is slim. I think that the distribution has a lot of kinks that should have been worked out, in my opinion, prior to the release of the vaccines. Um, but I think I, I too read that last night when I was laying in bed and that makes sense that they would. Um, however, I feel like there's sometimes a political struggle that states struggle with the federal government. Um, so I don't know what Massachusetts plans is. I know that the distribution of the vaccines within Massachusetts is also kind of rocky. Um, so, the, so the state pretty much holds all the vaccine plans. They hold everything from X, Y, and Z. And they're setting up these mass vaccination sites. They're um, certifying providers to offer the vaccines and then giving guidance along the way. But there's no concrete plans until there is one. So for the first responder vaccines, we found out about a week before that we were going to get vaccines to vaccinate our first responders. So it's very quick, get everything in motion, et cetera, et cetera. And nothing is very much a long-term plan at this point. So when people call us and they say, can I give them a list? I'm over 75, I need to get my vaccine. We say, unfortunately, there is no list. You just need to keep watching the, the Massachusetts State uh, website for vaccines. As soon as that information becomes available, that's where it will be. Um, but we don't have a magic list to send people to or to put people on. So it's it's a rocky process, and I wish it was laid out a little bit better, but we're everyone's doing the best that they can at this point in time. Yeah, I'm sure. And resources are slim too, right? Not even local government are struggling with um, the, la the lack of resources. The states are struggling with lack of resources too from the federal government. Yeah, I, I did hear from uh, the medical uh, practice that I go through uh, and they've been very good as far as keeping their patients uh, or practice uh, individuals informed. Uh, and what I'm being told is they're hopeful uh, for the, uh, I guess it would be phase two, uh, number one on the list, the uh, older people like myself um, are, are scheduled for early February. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping that, uh, you know, that, that works out. Um, but even with that, and this leads to the next question, uh, the fact that people start getting vaccines I, I presume that has nothing to do uh, with us not continuing to follow guidelines. Would, would that be a safe assumption? Absolutely. Even after the first vaccine, you're not 100% immune to COVID. And until we get mass herd immunity, there's still the risk. Um, so we always push wearing a mask, social distancing, making sure that you take the precautions. If you're sick, stay home. If you're not sick, stay home. Um, really following those guidelines, because until we can get a lot of people vaccinated and the majority of the general public vaccinated, there's always still a risk. And if it's not just you, it's somebody else that you know. I think that they're still determining if um, people who get the vaccine can still transmit the vaccine, even though it's, sorry, the virus, even though they don't, um, they are not exhibiting any symptoms themselves. So there's still a lot to learn. Um, about the immunity period after getting the vaccine, there's still so much um, that science hasn't proven yet. And I think that um, time shall tell on that part. Okay. Because that's one of the real, that's one of the real challenges is this notion. I really, and it hadn't occurred to me till this start, started getting rolled out that even for seniors, it's, it, you know, if, if all the seniors get it, right? 
that they still can be transmitting to non-seniors. How bad would that be? You know, mm -hmm. after, after after going through all of this, and the, the, there just isn't data on that. John, mm -hmm. do you mind if I ask? I, I yeah. like I do have one question. Sure. So go, going into the, you, you said that you got contacted by the by the state because you want they wanted to get the first responders done. It, it is it your understanding in phase two that the that the vaccine will be coming through the town or with the kind of the, with the authorization of the town or will it be going to a whole bunch of places? Will it be going to John's doctor's right. office? Will it be going to the drug stores? Will it be going all over the place? And, and if that's the case, how, how do you ever set up a, a, a sign up list? Because people are mm -hmm. gonna be signing up at all different places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the struggle too. So the state hasn't really come out and said, you guys are in charge of vaccinating however many people. And quite frankly, with my small staff, we wouldn't be able to vaccinate 20,000 people. There's no way. And plus we're, our, we're continuing to do the contact tracing. We're continuing to do enforcement. So to add another thing on local boards of health at this point, we all find is a, is a real struggle for us because we were already struggling with the work that we had. Um, that was put on us by the state and everyone else. Um, so I, I think that their their main goal is to set up these mass vaccination sites and to pull on other resources of people who are interested in giving vaccines, whether it be CVS, Walgreens, large hospitals like Marlboro Hospital, whoever to try and pull the on those resources first because they're clinical staff. I mean, right now we only have one staff person who can actually administer vaccines and that's our public health nurse. So the, the other four full-time people that we have aren't able to vaccinate people. We can set up a clinic, that's great. Um, and then there's also the logistics of, because both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are double doses, this coordinating of that is a whole nother logistical challenge. So it's getting people for that first vaccine. And then what if they don't show up for their second vaccine and you've opened up this vial. So each vial has about 10 vaccines in it. And if you don't use the whole vial, those vaccines get wasted. Wow. So we want everybody to come back for their second dose so that we're not wasting vaccines. Because if we then had another person to take that additional vaccine, then we would have to open a whole new vial to get their second dose in four weeks. Um, so the logistics around it to put on local boards of health is a lot in my personal opinion. Um, so I think that I've had this conversation with many health directors in the area. Um, the larger department, say Framingham, I, I'm on a phone call with Framingham quite frequently. They have a lot of public health nurses and the staff to be able to mobilize a clinic. Um, so it's probably much easier for them to do so, although they're struggling with putting it up too because it takes their staff away from contact tracing. Mm -hmm. So we think about what's more important, trying to control the disease out that's outbreaking in our communities or try to control the disease for the future. So I think there's a real struggle um, that I think we're all facing. And, Quite frankly, I think you. I think some boards of health will do vaccinations. I think some of them won't. We partnered with the city of Marlboro for the first responders, and um, that went really well. And we really felt like that was a vulnerable population. They're dealing with COVID on a daily basis, transporting people with COVID to the hospital. Um, so we really felt like that was an important group to get vaccinated. So we partnered with them. So whether we continue to partner with them or we widen our reach, I think it's all to be determined, to be honest with you. I understand. Uh, can, let, let me ask you another question about tracking. Uh, when the COVID first hit, uh, the tracking, and I'm sure it's probably still important, uh, but I think it took on a little bit um, more of an importance in the beginning because I, I think we were trying to determine where the cases were coming from, and then secondarily to notify those people uh, who were in contact with the people who contracted it so that they could be advised uh, that they needed to quarantine or do whatever um, you recommended or the state recommended. Can we kind of assume that even though, are we still doing tracking, by the way? Yes, we, we are. are. Um, 
can can we presume though with the number of people that now have it and i know we're up to a little over a thousand cases uh, can we kind of presume that people should um uh, assume that anyone they come in contact with may have it yes yes and they should have been assuming that the entire time um i think it's because somebody can test negative one day and test positive two days later, um, they would meet the criteria for being in close contact and they're still contagious to those other people. So we can safely assume that, and I assume that COVID is everywhere. So yep. everywhere I go, I'm putting myself at risk. Yep. Um, whoever I hang out with, I'm putting myself at risk. And that's a decision that I make. So I feel that other people should be thinking the same way. Very good, very good. Uh, and, uh, one more, uh, Arthur. Uh, when you hear horror stories like um, what's coming out of Los Angeles County uh, in, in California, uh, the hospitals are just uh, going through something they probably haven't gone through uh, this serious in, in 100 years. Can I presume not hearing anything of, of that um, that anything that bad around here, that our local hospitals are in pretty decent shape uh, as far as taking in new patients with COVID? I think they're in okay shape. Um, I think it's definitely worse now than it was a few months back when our numbers were lower. Um, I think that there's always going to be capacity issues, um, especially as we look at the, the cases rising. Um, so I think right now they are, but that's not to say it's not to change at any point. All right, good. Thanks, Kelly. Arthur? Mm -hmm. So when, when, when <clears throat> I'm sure that this conversation is starting to happen, that you, you know, you're, getting this, are you getting, you're getting the sense that the state is really looking at, among other things, really mass vaccination sites for the, for the, for the point at which they have significant vaccine. Do you, mm -hmm. do you have a sense of, of 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 one of those sites being around here, or what? So is, what is, you know, I heard like you know Fenway Park. Well, yeah, that's a big site. Yeah. But I'm, I'm trying, trying to, and obviously that's not going to work out until like May, you know, around here or like or like April. So is, is there a is there a place around here that you know that is is being discussed as this possible mass vaccination site? The closest one that I know of as of this moment is Gillette. Um, which is about a 45 minute drive from Hudson area. Um, I know that they're thinking about four across the state, but we think about the state being so large, right? So we're, that we still have Western Mass, which Western Mass to get to Gillette is about an hour and a half, two hours maybe. Um, so I think that it's, they haven't quite released those sites yet. And I don't think they will until the, the plans are totally finalized. I think Metro West is certainly an area that gets left out a lot um, when it comes to many different programs. But um, I'm thinking, or I would hope that Worcester might be a central location. Worcester is pretty central to a lot of places in Massachusetts. Um, so I, I don't know if there would be a site in Worcester that they would think about, but the only site that I concretely know of is uh, Gillette right now. Right. So, so you, there isn't any plan at this point, to, for example, to be putting up really big tents at Marlboro Hospital or doing, actually creating a new, like a, a site that could be used during the winter time. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so, Marlboro Hospital right now is a um, vaccination site for first responders across Massachusetts. So, any first responder in Massachusetts can go to Marlboro Hospital. Um, I go on a weekly phone call with them, and the last time that we spoke with them, they weren't quite sure of the plans moving forward. Again, they don't know how many vaccines they're going to be given, what the state is going to allow them to do. Um, so it's kind of all up in the air, but I would say that Marlboro Hospital is probably um, one of the best locations for a site. And I think that that would be really great for the town of Hudson and the city of Marlboro is to have that site so close. Um, and then we could mobilize volunteers or our staff in order to support that site. Um, that would probably be the most ideal solution, but it's all up in the air. Yeah. yeah. That's the, and John, that's going to be the challenge for you folks at the Board of Selectmen, because you're just, you get, you're getting barraged with questions about this stuff, you know, but 
you just everybody's kind of still guessing you know mm -hmm. yeah there's certainly uncertainty and, and i think in all fairness and honesty um the barrage of questions are going to kelly uh in her department uh <laughs> she's the one that's getting hit constantly um from business owners and individuals uh and everybody else so um challenging uh right you, you gotta and just do it. I guess we all try to do the best we can. I know that's where Kelly is right now, just trying to do the very best she can. And I know that Kelly, I mean, it was kind of you to come on because I know John and I had talked about the fact that for a lot of seniors, you know, who aren't going on the web, who are kind of uncomfortable going on the website, you know, there are a lot of a lot of my clients are still pretty leery about <laughs> figuring any of that stuff out. Right? We're hoping that this show can really provide a vehicle for folks because I think everybody knows how to do the clicker on their TV, you know? Um, yeah. So we're really, you know, one, one of the things that we're really, you know, hoping is that we can be kind of doing, you know, having you come back or having somebody come back so, so that we can keep people in touch. Because as, as you're both saying, the hardest part about this is that it changes like every day, every week. I, mean, I remember, you know, one, one day everybody over over 65 was going to be in, the, in, in phase two. And then all of a sudden everybody Oh, it was 75 and then it was going to be 65 and then it was oh well 75 will be in the first part of phase two and 65 will be in the second part of phase two and then there's all this discussion about well those are true unless you you know you get you get bonus points for having comorbidities you know yeah. and it's like but it's like everybody's you know this group everybody's got comorbidities right. that's why <laughs> one, one friend was telling me they think that they were really, you know, speculating that phase two is going to be bigger than phase three because once you get through everybody that's got comorbidities, you're pretty much done. You know, <laughs> you know, everybody is going to get hit by these. So, so, and, and I, I, the, I, I did talk to two seniors. That was pretty. It's pretty funny to think, you know. So they remember trying to, you know, get themselves a make believe license when they were kids so that they could go buy liquor, right? <laughs> now it's going to be to show that they're over 75 yeah. so they can get in line for the vaccine, you know? Yeah. People going, I don't know, this doesn't really look like you, uh, you know? <laughs> oh, well, this would be, you know, <laughs> just, you know, I, I look I look much younger in, in person than I do in my, you know? it's, a, it's, it's a strange concept, you know? But it's just, it's constantly, it's just people, that's what everyone's doing. They're just scurrying around to try to figure it out, yeah, you know? For sure. So is there some, is there some kind of, of, of you, you know, see you're on the call, are a lot of the doctors on those calls too? Are, is, are there, is there a, because I would think among the medical professionals, there must, this must be the, like the sole topic of conversation right now. The calls with Marlboro Hospital? Yeah. So it's me and it's um, our town manager comes on the call as well. And then it's two people from Marlboro Hospital, their operations manager, I believe, and then their outreach person. Um, so they update us. Well, a couple months ago, they would update us on the amount of people in Hudson that they tested, how many positivity, the positivity rate, et cetera, et cetera, how they were doing. They would check in with us to see what we needed. Um, I think that the collaboration will come more with the vaccines because this is, again, like you just said, this is exactly what they're here for. And it, that's what they do as medical professionals and doctors. And um, so I think the collaboration will probably take off. In the past, we, did, we would update each other. We would be on the same phone calls. We would say, what do you need? How can we support? But we didn't really need anything because we kind of worked in two different realms. So local board of health would do the contact tracing. We would take care of the community and they would take care of the sick patients and they would do the testing. Um, so I think that this is now a time that we will might start to collaborate. So, and, and John, I think, I think this is also a time when people come to really appreciate one of the nice things about having a hospital this close. You yeah. know, yeah. that, you know, the notion, you know, if, if you're really sick like this, of, you know, imagine if, if you know, if, 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 if everything you did, you were going to have to go to Worcester or to what, or to, or to Framingham, you know, yeah. it's just it be really tough. And, and I know, you know, and I know Kelly that, you know, John and I have talked about inviting somebody from Marlboro Hospital to the show to really kind of talk about this, because I know they're very, you know, Michael Murphy who was originally from, from Hudson is the chairman of the board. And I th think is. I think they're really, really trying to do everything they can to try to make this all work. Sure. Well, listen, as I mentioned, my, my, one of my jobs is as timekeeper, Kelly, and I'm watching the times and seeing that we're running a little close. 
But, you know, John, I really want to thank you for finding Kelly and getting her to come on. I know, Kelly, you've got a big day job and it's yep. just constant. And I know that John's paying you all kinds of overtime for the for the work that you <laughs> the work that you've been. Oh, oh, he's smiling. I have a bad <laughs> But it's wonderful to know that, you know, you've got somebody that, it, it, and I think for a lot of the folks who are, who are talking too, you know, for so many seniors that just feel like, you know, you're kind of lost and there's this big bureaucracy in who they are to actually see you, you know, I mean, you look pretty friendly, right? Unfortunately, I'm a friendly person. I mean, this may increase the number of calls you get. That's the only thing. But, but, but by the way, having, having said that, so for folks who are trying to reach you, I almost hate to say, what, what's the number? How can they find you? It's 978-562-2020. And if you don't, if nobody answers, leave a voicemail. We promise to return your voicemail. Some people call and call, um, and some sometimes we're staffed remotely, so we will only return the phone call if we get the voicemail. So make sure you leave a voicemail if you do call, and we promise to return your call. Very good. So Kelly, thank you so much for doing this. John, thank you so much for doing this. I think this is a really, really important service. Maybe we yep. can, you know, we'll, and I think for, for folks who are watching, we're going to continue to try to focus on these things. We realize this is an issue where information is changing all the time. This is one of the points of cable TV, of local cable, to be helping you know what's going on in your community. Um, and this, it, this is really, so that sooner or later, we can all get out of the house again, which will be very yeah. exciting, right? So. Um, Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, John. Folks, stay safe. You don't want to be one of those people that next Christmas they're saying, oh, too bad about grandma. You know, we wish she were here this year, but she died of COVID. No, you don't want to be one of those people. We got to take care of each other and stay safe. And we'll see you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you very much. Stay safe, Thanks, Appreciate it.